This video is about supply and demand, which really provide the building blocks for how markets work and can start to try and explain the reasons for why we get such large price differentials across different markets. So starting off with demand, and we say the definition here is the quantity of a product that consumers are willing and able to purchase at a given price and over a given time period. And so in order to demand a good, consumers have not only got to want to buy it, but they've got to have the ability to back that up in terms of affordability to be able to purchase it. Um, the quantity of a product that's demanded will vary depending on the price and also it will vary depending on the amount of time over which that product's demanded. And so bringing all these things together, we can draw what we call the demand curve. So what we do is we plot price on our y axis and we plot quantity on our x axis. And then we could just sketch this relationship here, which shows the relationship between the price of a product and the quantity that will be demanded. And the law of demand says that as price rises, quantity demanded will fall. So that's quite logical, really. If you think about this being the price of, for example, apples, and this price here might be 20p, and you'd have, say, 500 apples being demanded at 20p. And if the price was to rise to, say, 30p, then fewer consumers would be willing and able to purchase those apples at that price. They might look to alternative substitutes instead. And so the quantity demanded will fall. And that gives you this downward sloping demand curve and that inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded for a product. Now, as well as this relationship between price and quantity demanded, there's also going to be a range of other factors that are going to affect demand for a product or service as well. And we're just going to take a look at three of those here. So the first is consumer's income. So if people's income goes up, then they're going to be willing and able to buy more goods. And so you'd naturally expect their demand for most products to go up. And we call those normal goods, goods for which a rise in income lead to an increase in demand. There are going to be some goods, though, for which a rise in income leads to a fall in demand. They'd be called inferior goods. So to give one example, you might find that as people's incomes rise, they might be more likely to travel by taxi rather than traveling by bus. And so the demand for bus travel as incomes rise, you might find falling. The second one here, you've got the price of other products. So not the price of the product itself, but the price of other um, related products. And so you might have substitute goods where if the price of one good goes up, then the, then the demand for the substitute is going to go up as well. So if we saw the price of taxis increasing, then you would expect more people to then think, oh, actually, I'll travel by bus instead. And so the demand for bus travel would go up because they're substitute goods. But then you'd also have complementary goods where if the price of the complement was to go up, then that would lead to a decrease in demand for the other good. So if you think about games consoles and controllers, if the price of the games console goes up, then you'd have less demand for the controllers because fewer people would have the games console and therefore fewer people would want to demand um, the controller as well. And then finally, we've got consumer preferences. And these ones are a little bit less tangible. And there's not quite such hard and fast rules with them. Um, but they're going to have a really big impact on the demand for a product or service as well. So you might find this happening a lot in the clothing industry with changes in fashion year on year, causing demand to go up or down, or also longer term trends. Um, so, for example, healthier eating might cause to an increase in demand for fruit and vegetables um, and less demand for fast foods. Now, let's just bring that back and see how it's going to translate onto our demand curve diagram. And so any of these factors that are going to cause demand to increase, it's going to mean that our demand curve shifts, the entire demand curve shifts to the right. And the reason for that is because if demand increases, it increases at any given price. So at this price here, call it P, you've got that quantity demanded on our original demand curve. But then we've got, say, for example, consumers' incomes increasing. And so that leads to, at that price, a higher quantity demanded. And that's going to be true at any of these prices along the demand curve 
the quantity demanded is now going to be higher at any given price and so the demand curve is going to be further to the right and so any of those factors causing demand to increase shifts that whole curve to the right and the same is going to be true in reverse any factor that causes the demand to decrease is going to shift the whole curve leftwards so for example here if you were to have a decrease in the price of a substitute good then that's going to cause at any given price the entire demand curve to shift to the left so at this price p here you're now going to have q2 demanded rather than q and the same is true again across all of the price points on that demand curve so the whole curve shifts to the left i think it's important to really make clear that difference between the impact of a change in price and the impact of a change in any of those other factors affecting demand and so if we have a change in price then what we're going to find is we have a contraction or an extension along the demand curve and the reason for that is because the demand curve is plotted against price on the y-axis so if the price changes you have a movement along the demand curve and you could talk about that in terms of a change in the quantity demanded so if the quantity demanded falls then you could talk about a contraction along that demand curve and if the quantity demanded rises then you talk about an extension along that demand curve but if we get a change in any of those other factors affecting demand so for example consumers income the price of other products then the whole curve is going to shift as we've just seen and so a change in those factors affecting demand an increase in demand is going to lead to a shift to the right in the curve and a decrease in demand is going to lead to a shift to the left in, in the curve and make sure you're using that language so a change in demand or a shift in demand caused by a change in those factors or an extension or a contraction along the demand curve and a change in quantity demanded caused by a change in price. We're moving from demand onto supply now then, and you'll see a lot of similarities in the definition. And the, the difference really is that where demand, we're looking at consumers and what they're willing and able to buy. With supply, we're just simply looking at producers and what they'd be willing and able to provide or produce at a given market price and over a given time period. And so the difference there is going to be that where consumers are looking to maximise their utility from consuming a good and get the best value for money. And so there's going to be that inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded we're going to find the opposite with supply because producers are looking to maximize their profits and so an increase in the price is going to give them that incentive to increase the quantity they supply in the hunt for those higher profits provided by the higher prices and so you can see here on the diagram that we get this upward sloping supply curve because as price increases suppliers are incentivized to increase their quantity supplied and just like with demand, there's going to be a really wide range of factors that are going to affect producers' willingness and ability to supply products to a market. And so first one would be production costs and technology. So that covers quite a lot here. But essentially, if producers experience a fall in production costs, then that's going to make it more profitable for them to supply output. And it's going to incentivize them to increase their supply and for the same reasons if they get technological improvements technological advances then that essentially is going to decrease their production cost per unit because they're going to be able to produce more output um, with fewer resources and that's going to incentivize them to supply more as well you might also find government policies are going to have an impact so for example if we had an increase in taxes then that's going to increase costs of production and it's going to lead to a decrease in supply so if all of a sudden the government decided to increase the taxes on the production of lamb and then farmers are going to find it less profitable to produce lamb they might decide to produce more beef instead and so their supply of lamb would fall and equally if their government were to subsidize particular production so if instead they decided to subsidize the production of lamb because they wanted um, farmers to produce more lamb then that's going to decrease their cost of production and that would lead to an increase in supply because they'd then be incentivized to supply more at any given price 
And finally, we might find the price of other goods are going to have an impact. So if we had two goods that were in competitive supply, so for example, strawberries and raspberries, they're kind of using the same space in order to produce them. And if the price of strawberries was to go up, then those strawberry farmers are going to think, well, actually, I'm going to get more um, profit from producing strawberries rather than raspberries. And so an increase in the price of a good in competitive supply will lead to a decrease in supply of the other good. So if we have an increase in the price of strawberries, suppliers are producing more strawberries, they're producing fewer raspberries, and so we get a decrease in supply of raspberries. But you could have a good that was in joint supply. So going back to that example of lamb, you might have lamb and wool, which is produced together with the same resources. And so if we had an increase in the price for lamb, then that's going to incentivize suppliers and farmers to produce more of that lamb. And kind of as an offshoot of producing more lamb, they're going to have more wool now to supply as well. And so that's going to mean that it's going to increase the supply of wool. And just like we saw with demand, a change in any of these factors affecting supply um, are going to lead to a change and a shift in the whole supply curve. So if we had a change in any factor that's going to cause supply to increase, then we find this whole supply curve is going to shift to the right. And a change in any factor causing supply to decrease is going to cause the whole supply curve to shift to the left. So, for example, if we had a fall in production costs in a particular industry, then we'd find the supply curve to that industry would shift to the right. And if we had an increase in a tax on a particular product, then we'd find the supply curve for that product would shift left. And again, do make sure you're using the correct language with this. So a change in price is going to lead to a change in quantity supplied. Um, so an increase in price would lead to an extension along the supply curve and an increase in quantity supplied and a decrease in price would lead to a contraction along the supply curve and a decrease in quantity supplied. While a change in any of those other factors affecting supply, so changes in costs of production, technology, taxes, subsidies, etc., they're going to lead to an increase or a decrease in supply and a shift of the entire supply curve.